Reynades. Reynades is a full-blown action-packed magical RPG in which two people with different perspectives fight for their ideals in a realistic recreation of modern-day Shibuya, Tokyo. By properly utilizing suppressed and liberated states, anyone can easily execute show-stopping actions. In suppress mode, you are unable to attack, but you can avoid any enemy attacks with the press of a single button. Well, in liberated mode, you can go all out with your attacks, but will be unable to defend, so timing is essential in this game. Players can instantly switch between up to three different characters in the middle of a battle. Each character comes with their own unique abilities. Pick your characters depending on the situation to gain the upper hand. If you look closely, this game is kind of similar to Kingdom Hearts because yes, the developer from this game is a fan of Kingdom Hearts and took inspiration from the Yozora boss fight or the Verum Rex uh, side of the story from Kingdom Hearts. So that is why this is set in Shibuya and the main character of this game is also pretty similar to Yuzora. Dragon's Dogma 2 Well, where to begin? This is just a great game. You can climb up to your enemies and do a lot of sandbox stuff in this game for any battle, but it is sitting in the lower tier uh, because the microtransaction of this game. Yeah, so reviewers have published their reviews and after the game launch, they put microtransaction in the game. Note that, yeah, you can definitely ignore the microtransaction and get everything in game, but it is still a shitty move by Capcom. So I put it in the lower tier of this list. But nonetheless, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a very, very good game. You will have tons of content, tons of playtime, and it will not bore you for some time soon. Even though the performance, they say, it's kind of shitty, especially in the town. I wonder why. Each to their own. Unicorn Overlord. This one took me by surprise because this game is awesome. Vanillaware just makes some wonderful stuff right here. This game is beautiful to look at and listen to. The world map is fun to explore and I am happy to find the mini games and activities scattered throughout the map. So the exploration is quite nice. And with the sheer amount of character classes you can unlock, this is a game for a completionist, for real though. I also like that I can recruit so many characters and build relationships with them. And the main story, while simple, it is also intriguing. All in all, I'm loving this game. So much so that this game actually managed to pull my attention away from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. For a couple of moments, of course. So again, this is just a fantastic game for any RPG fans or strategy games fans. I really do recommend it. Yet, it is all the dawn of a darker conspiracy. Well, if you love Suikoden, there's no reason to not keep an eye on this game because this is 
the successor of Suikoden. Yudin Chronicles 100 Heroes is an upcoming Japanese role-playing video game developed by Rabbit and Bear Studios and published by 505 Games. This game is led by Yoshitaka Murayama, the creator of Suikoden video game series by Konami. Yeah, Konami man, not a beautiful uh, thing to look at. So this game was a this game is a crowdfunded game and it exceeded five hundred thousand dollars man in just three to four days and it is the number one crowdfunded games of all time. And now we are gonna get the release in twenty twenty four and I am super excited to try this game out. Hero combos. <laughs> Treasure hunt starts now! Why look at that! Now you have three of them! Why? Think they'll need a little extra muscle? <laughs> With over a hundred times and senses Final Fantasy 16. Oh man, where do I start with this? Because this game has received some mixed reviews. This game is just really different from any other Final Fantasy game because this game is kind of dark. Well, not kind of, but really dark. It is for a more mature audience. Uh, there's sex scenes, there is kissing, just more mature stuff in this game. Even though people say that the combat is kind of one dimensional because it is an action combat, you're better off playing Devil May Cry and so and so on, but it does look pretty fun. And the visuals, man, holy, I don't know, I really don't know how Square Enix pull it off, but man, I'm in for the ride. Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. This is basically a re release of Shin Megami Tensei 5. Uh, they added some new content, new personas, sorry, not persona, demons or devils in this game. They have new features, new quality of life, like um, auto play, which excites me a lot as a gacha gamer because I do like. A good auto play in a game in a triple A game or a paid game. I know I'm so dumb to be excited for auto play, but it does make grinding less of a hassle. So that's the good thing that I like about auto play. But the bad part about this game is that it is also a re release of the game, so you do have to pay full price again to enjoy Vengeance. I don't think there will be a DLC for Vengeance, I don't know for sure though, uh, so it is just going to be a re-release like Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royale. I mean it's not bad, it is just Atlas uh, making money, milking the fans again and again and again. So maybe they can develop a game, another game more and more and more, or just enjoy the money, I don't know man. So yeah, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance coming out this year i think around june akuma wa sore zore seikaku ya konomi ga kotonari hito suji nawa de wa ikanai akuma bakari na no de iroiro to kaiwa o tanoshinde mite kudasai soshite nakama ni natta akuma doshi o gattai sase te arata na nakama o umidasu koto mo otto saki hodo tojou shita akuma wa you will be able to power up special skills, such as the ability to turn your body to metal, or even dark release. Don't forget that even the strongest fiend needs a power-up 
So manage your supplies. Consumable items can increase your attacks, defense, and help you recover power of darkness. So make sure to stock up. Also, water is an important resource that you can restock in water supply points and will be consumed to heal your health in case you are about to be defeated. All vehicles in Sandland have unique features. The jump bot will bounce over high cliffs. The hover car can float over water to cross dangerous rivers. And the battle armor can move heavy obstacles to open blocked paths. Remember, you can carry up to five capsules, each containing a vehicle at any given time. So plan ahead according to the situation and play style. We'll probably find traveling merchants on the main roads. Vehicles will not only increase the agility while exploring, but will also prove to be very useful in battles. With higher firepower, mobility, and resistance, vehicles can stand up against huge enemies and tank groups that Beelzebub alone struggles to defeat. But be careful. If a vehicle is destroyed in combat, you will go down with it. This is where customization comes in. Persona 3 Reload Well, it's Persona 3, man Do I really need to explain this? Really? I do? Alright, Persona 3 Reload is a remake of the original Persona 3 Still, it is a turn-based RPG Uh, they do remake most of the part in this game With flashy visuals, flashy team attacks All the flashy stuff in this game This game is just too stylish, man Simple yet stylish at the same time. If you didn't know already, my profile picture is the Joker from Persona 3 Reload. So that's pretty awesome. Oh, Junpei's got you back. We expected as much. But don't be careless. Persona abilities can be dangerous depending on how they're used. I want to use this power to help me live my own life. Take this seriously. <laughs> What more can I say? Number one, it is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. All you have to do is just play the fucking game, enjoy it, and you will have a ton of fun playing this game. I kid you not. 
The gameplay in this game is just on another level. The combat has been enhanced in almost every way from remake and the introduction of synergy attacks and being able to pick your team you go into battle with is just genius. The visuals is mind blowing although you know some can be quite bleh, ugly at times. But the set pieces, the different regions and areas are so incredibly massive and so beautiful that it will just take your breath away sometimes. And to add to that, great performance with both 30 and 60 fps options in the ps5 if you complain about the visuals in the performance mode where you get 60 fps now it has been patched uh, there's not a big difference between the previous version of this game in performance mode but hey at least we got a patch at least they are trying to do something to make this game even better on how they look all in all this game is just amazing uh, I really don't know how they managed to do this and I think this game can be called a quadruple A game Honestly, cannot wait for this game to launch in PC man the graphics man the graphics Look at the...